the title of this video is the Phantom 3 Standard DJI's Biggest Mistake. Now before you pause the video and start commenting, I am not in any way knocking the Phantom 3 Standard as a quad. It's a very capable quad. In fact, it's a very good quad. I've got no issues with it whatsoever. I've got friends that fly them and they absolutely love them. No, there is an issue and I'm going to explain that issue. Let's just start at the beginning. Uh, I run the Facebook page for the Phantom 3 Standard. Well, I don't run it. I'm an admin. Kenneth's the, uh, the guy that runs it. And the biggest problem that I see most of the time, probably 99% of the time, is FPV range. If you're new to quads, there are two types of range. There is the control range, that is how far you can fly before the quad loses connection with the controller. And there's the FPV range, that's how far you can fly before the image on the screen breaks up and stops working. And that, I think, is the biggest problem that people have with them. Some people have no problems with them, others have issues all the time. And I've had this thought, and I'm going to tell you what that thought is. Let's have a look inside the Phantom 3 standard controller. If you've never seen this one before, this is what it looks like. You've got your control area at the top, you've got your two FPV aerials here, you've got your stick boxes here. Down the bottom here you have your 5.8 GHz control board and your 2.4 GHz FPV board. And you've got all the various cables here just running next to each other. Now, many years ago, DJI brought out this quad. This is the Phantom 2 Vision Plus. I'm just move that three out of the way for a second. Now, this was DJI's first attempt at a proper serious uh, camera platform, an aerial camera platform, as they called it at the time. And I'm going to show you the controller that that uses. It's this one. Yep, yeah, exactly the same as the Phantom 3 standard. This is the version 1 that takes four batteries. The version 2, version 3 had the gimbal wheel, like the Phantom 3 standard, and a rechargeable battery inside. The big difference between this and the Phantom 3 standard controller is this small white box here. This is called the range extender. And I'm going to show you what's inside the range extender, because I think this was the problem. This is the range extender. First thing you'll notice has its own battery so it doesn't rely on the main controller battery to run. Then you've got the control board here. If I just flip it round, you will see this. This is the mesh fabric stuff that you get that covers your GPS module, and its job is to prevent interference to the uh, aerials that are located just underneath in there to give you know better signal quality between the camera and the range extender and your phone as well. This is the RE700. Now, DJI did produce an early version called the RE500 that didn't have the padding, and the range quality on that was, was terrible. Uh, when they brought out the Phantom 2 Vision Plus, you obviously looked carefully at what the problems were and decided that they wanted to make sure the aerials were covered. So, your aerials, first of all, are covered. It runs on a separate power supply. On the Phantom 3 standard, as I said, you've got your aerials here, all the cables running next to each other, lots of ways maybe for interference to get through. And of course, the FPV board is mounted right next to or on top of the 5.8 gigahertz controller board. Now, I'm not saying I'm an expert with Wi-Fi signals and signal levels and all that sort of thing. But I think that if DJI had used the range extender on the Phantom 3 standard, as they did with the Vision Plus, I think that there wouldn't be as many issues with range as there is currently on the Phantom 3 standard. As I said, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm not an expert, as I said. But you can, of course, you know, leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. I'd be interested to hear from people who've probably got more experience than I have with this sort of thing. This was just a sort of, in my opinion, type video after having to think about it. However, if you do want to increase your range to the Phantom 3 standard, then take a look at this beastie. This is for the Phantom 2 Vision Plus. This is my very first one. It's got a little fold out there for taking iPads and all that sort of thing. And this is the Antelite DBS panel. Uh, you can actually buy these still for the Phantom 3 standard because as you can see, you have two aerials on your uh, FPV unit and the one aerial for your controller. I won't say how far I fly with this or how far I used to fly with this when I used to fly with it, but it was a good, good distance. Um, if you just Google search or YouTube search, uh, Ice Light DBS on the Phantom 2 Vision Plus. You'll see some fantastic ranges out of it. 
That was £100, which is roughly what they're selling for now from, um, is it maxuav.com, I think it is. Not one for plugging websites, but I do like Max UAV. They do do quite a lot of good stuff. And no, this video is not sponsored by them, by the way. <laughs> Just in case you wouldn't have us plugging them. There probably are other places that sell uh, the ice light panels as well. But that's it. That, that's what I think. I think, if they, as I say, if they'd use this, maybe it wouldn't suffer the same sort of issues that uh, it suffers at the moment. Just my thoughts. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, fly safely, take care, and of course, I'll see you again real soon.